Hi everyone, I'm going to continue reading Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. We are on chapter five and chapter five was called The Golden Tickets. You guys notice by my background where I still am? Having a fun time and let's get started with chapter five. You mean people are actually going to be allowed to go inside the factory? cried Grandpa Joe. Read us what it says, quickly. All right said Mr. Bucket, smoothing out the newspaper. Listen, evening bulletin. Mr. Willy Wonka, the candy-making genius whom nobody has seen for the last 10 years, sent out the following notice today. I, Willy Wonka, have decided to allow five children, just five, mind you, and no more, to visit my factory this year. These lucky five will be shown around personally by me and they will be allowed to see all the secrets and magic of my factory then at the end of our tour as a special present all of them will be given enough chocolates and candies to last them the rest of their lives so watch out for the golden tickets five golden tickets have been printed on golden paper and these five golden tickets have been hidden underneath the ordinary wrapping paper of five ordinary candy bars. These five candy bars may be anywhere, in any shop, in any street, in any town, in any country, in the world, upon any counter where Wonka's candies are sold. And the five lucky finders of these five golden tickets are the only ones who will be allowed to visit my factory and see what it's like now inside. Good luck to you all and happy hunting. Signed, Willy Wonka. Ah, oh, the old man's daddy, muttered Grandma, jo Grandma Josephine. He's brilliant, cried Grandpa Joe. He's a magician. Just imagine what will happen now. The whole world will be searching for those golden tickets. Everybody will be buying Wonka's candy bars in hopes of finding one. He'll sell more than ever before. Oh, how exciting it would be to find one. And all the chocolate and candies that you could eat for the rest of your life for free, said Grandpa George. Just imagine that. They'd have to deliver them in a truck, said Grandma Georgina. It makes me quite ill to think about it, said Grandma Josephine. Nonsense, cried Grandpa Joe. Wouldn't it be something, Charlie, to open a bar of candy and see a golden ticket glistening inside? Mm, it certainly would, Grandpa. But there isn't any hope, Charlie said sad sadly. I only get one candy bar a year. You never know, darling, said Grandma Georgina. It's your birthday next week. You have just as much of a chance as anybody else. I'm afraid that simply isn't true, said Grandpa George. The kids who are going to find the golden tickets are the ones who can afford to buy candy bars every day. Charlie only gets one a year. There isn't a hope. Friends, that's the end of chapter five. Let's continue reading chapter six. Chapter six is called The First Two Finders. What would you do if you found a golden ticket? Let's find out. The very next day, the first golden ticket was found. The finder was a boy called Augustus Glue, and Mr. Bucket's evening newspaper carried a large picture of him on the front page. The picture showed a nine-year-old boy who was so enormously fat that he looked as though he had been blown up with a powerful pump. Great flabby folds of fat bulged out from every part of his body, and his face was like a monstrous ball of dough with two small, greedy, currenty eyes peering out upon the world. The town in which Augustus Gloop lived, the newspaper said, had gone wild with excitement over their new hero. Flags were flying from all of the windows children had been given a holiday from school and a parade was being organized in honor of this famous youth. 
I, I just knew I would find a golden ticket, his mother had told the newspaper men. He eats so many candy bars a day that it was almost impossible for him not to find one. Eating is his hobby, you know. That's all he's interested in, but still that's better than being a hooligan and shooting off zip guns and things like that in his spare time, isn't it? And what I always say is he wouldn't go on eating like this unless he needed nourishment, wouldn't he? It's all vitamins anyway. Uh, what a thrill it would be for him to visit Mr. Wonka's marvelous factory. We're just as proud as can be. What a revolting woman, said Grandma Josephine. And what a repulsive boy. Here's a picture, you guys ready? Picture of the mom and Augustus. What a repulsive boy, said Grandma Georgina. <sighs> Only four golden tickets left, said Grandpa Joe. I wonder who will get those. And now the whole country, indeed the whole world, seems suddenly to be caught up in a mad candy buying spree. Everybody searching frantically for those precious remaining tickets. Fully grown women were seen going into sweet shops and buying 10 Wonka candy bars at a time, then tearing off the wrappers on the spot and peering eagerly underneath for a glint of golden paper. Children were taking hammers and smashing their piggy banks and running out to the shops with handfuls of money. In one city, a famous gangster robbed a bank of $5,000 and spent the whole lot on candy bars that same afternoon. And when the police entered his house to arrest him, they found him sitting on the floor amidst mountains of candy, rippings off, ripping off the papers with the blade of a long da dagger. And in far off Russia, a woman called Charlotte Rus claimed to have found the second ticket, but it turned out to be a clever fake. In England, the famous scientist, Professor Foulbody, invented a machine which would tell you at once, without opening the wrapper of a candy bar, whether or not there was a golden ticket hidden underneath it. The machine had a mechanical arm that shut out with tremendous force and grabbed a hold of anything that had the slightest bit of gold inside of it. And for a moment, it looked like that might be the answer to everything. But unfortunately, while the professor was showing off the machine to the public at the candy counter of a large department store, the mechanical arm shot out and made a grab for the gold filling in the back tooth of a duchess who was standing nearby. There was an ugly scene and the machine was smashed by the crowd. Suddenly, on the day before Charlie's birthday, the newspapers announced that the second golden ticket had been found. The lucky person was a small girl named Baruka Salt, who lived with her rich parents in a great city far away. Once again, Mr. Bucket's evening newspaper carried a big picture of the finder. She was sitting between her beaming father and mother in the living room of their house, waving the golden ticket above her head and grinning from ear to ear. Why don't you guys all show me what a big smile you would have if you found a golden ticket. So happy! Veruca's father, Mr. Salt, had eagerly explained to the newspaper man exactly how the ticket was found. You see here, fellas, he said, as soon as my little girl told me she simply had to have one of those golden tickets, I went out into the town and started buying up all the Wonka bars I could lay my hands on. Thousands of them I must have bought, hundreds of thousands. Then I had them loaded onto trucks and sent directly to my own factory. I'm in the peanut business, you see. And I've got a hundred women working for me over at that joint shelling peanuts and roasting and salting. That's what they do all day long, those women. They sit there shelling peanuts. So I says to them, okay, girls, I says, from now on you can stop shelling peanuts and start shelling the wrappers of these crazy candy bars instead. And they did. 
I had every worker in the place yanking the paper off those bars of chocolate full speed ahead from morning till night. But three days went by and we had no luck. Huh, it was terrible. My little Veruca got more and more upset each and every day. And every time I went home, she would scream at me, where's my golden ticket? I want a golden ticket. And she would lie for hours on the floor, kicking and yelling in the most disturbing way. Well, sir, I just hated to see my little girl feeling unhappy like that. So I vowed I would keep up the search until I'd gotten her what she wanted. Then suddenly, on the evening of the fourth day, one of my women ye workers yelled, I've got it, a golden ticket. And I said, give it to me quick. And she did. And I rushed it home and I gave it to my darling Veruca. And now she's all smiles and we all have a happy home once again. Here's a picture of Veruca, her mother and her father. Well, that's even worse than the fat boy, said Grandma Josephine. Oh, she needs a real good spanking, said Grandma Georgina. I don't think the girl's father played it quite fair, Grandpa. Do you? Charlie murmured. He spoils her, Grandpa Joe said. And no good can ever come from spoiling a child like that, Charlie. You mark my words. Come on to bed, my darling, said Charlie's mother. Tomorrow's your birthday, so don't forget that. So I expect you'll be up early to open your present. A Wonka candy bar, cried Charlie. It is a Wonka candy bar, isn't it? Yes, my love, his mother said. Of course it is. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if I found the third golden ticket inside of it? Charlie said. Bring it in here when you get it, Grandpa Joe said. Then we can all watch you taking off the wrapper. Ooh, friends, I just am curious, would you guys want a Wonka candy bar for your birthday or maybe for some special event coming up? You might. That was the end of chapter six. We will continue reading chapter seven next and chapter seven is called Charlie's Birthday. Ooh, tell me what you think might happen, but you guys all get to say, done, done, done. And I'll see you guys later. Have a good day. Bye.